All right, today we're going to do part two of Slackware with Surge. We're going to take a look at Slackware package management. How are you doing today, Surge? I'm fine today, so we can start if you wish. Okay, sure. So uh, for those that haven't checked out, we did a video earlier, uh, about two or three weeks ago, we did the installation for Slackware Current, and we did some basic uh, package management. We updated the system and whatnot, but people wanted a little bit more of us on package management, so that's what we're going to cover today. So I've got Slackware here in a VM, Slackware Current, and I'm going to open up uh, the terminal. Uh, where should I go, though, to, to get packages for Slackware? So uh, we will see three different ways of installing mm -hmm. packages today. And the first way is the oldest one. So it is the classical way of um, configuring, make, and make install. So you need to get the sources of a package uh, from the internet. So you should open your web browser. Okay, well, I'll open up Firefox. All right, oh, they're having trouble. Well, no, no, go to the second, yes, okay. Yeah, all right. <laughs> um, here, you can either go to slackbills.org. I think we uh, visited that last time, yeah, yes. that's right and here. And you can okay. put a simple one, leafpad. Leafpad. Really like that text editor. Okay, so you click on leafpad, uh, mm -hmm. the, yes, there. You scroll down. And you click on the link under source downloads. Yeah, that's all right. And we will save that file. Yes. All right. So it should arrive in your downloads folder. It is downloaded. Yep. Yes, you can go in the terminal. All right. And let's see. Now, as a downloads. single user, yes, downloads. Mm -hmm. LS. Uh, you still yes. have uh, packages from the last time, but it's mm -hmm. no problem. You need to untar the leafpad tarball. All right. And that is uh, tar. What are the flags I need to give this? Uh, minus XVF. S X X X X XVF. That's right. Yes. Space and, then, and L tap completion. And there we go. And that should have done that. It did. Yes. Normally, you should have a leafpad directory. So change directory into that one. Okay, and now we will do it um, as they did it in the past. So okay. the first thing we need to do is to use the config view. How do we do this? Uh, we put as a standard user dot slash config view space double hyphen prefix equals slash USR. Oh, well, uh, so I need to go back and dot slash configure and then what? Then a uh, space and then a uh, double hyphen prefix uh, prefix equals, no, no space, equals slash USR. Then space, no, 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 no slash space, uh, double hyphen, um, it is local state DRR, so it is in one word, local state DIR, so D-I-R, gotcha. equals slash var, All right. space, double hyphen, sys, conf, DIR, so it's S-Y-S, C-O-N-F, D-I-R, equals slash ETC. Okay. Before you press enter, I will explain these three double hyphens. So the double hyphen prefix means where do we want to install uh, the binaries, the libraries, the man pages, the shares, and so, and so on. This is for double hyphen prefix. The double hyphen local state dir means where, in which directory, do we want uh, to put the data files which can be modified during the run of the program. And in Slackware, it will be under slash var. Mm -hmm. And the last double hyphen, sys 
Convair, as the name suggests, is the directory where you put the configuration file of your system. And in this case, it is slash etc. So you can press enter. Okay. Uh, did I not type that right? It says try dot configure help. So I must have mistyped something here. Yes, probably. Uh, first, could you go into the ls if you have a slash, uh, uh, if you have a configure? Yeah, let me ls. And, uh, well, let's do. Yes, you have a configure. Thing. Okay, but uh, is it um, executable? Yes, it is. So normally it should work. So it is a dot slash configure without space. Mm hmm minus minus prefix equals slash usr yes minus minus local state dir equals var minus sys ah i see it sys was missing a s ah oh sorry okay there we go and it's building okay <laughs> sorry uh. so the configuration right. is finished and it's correct because you have no error messages now you type make make yes So now it is creating the objects. Okay. So. It's finished? No, it's still oh, making it. Okay. It's making it. <laughs> but it's but, not very long. It's a short package. No, it actually went pretty quick, though. It's done now. It's done. So now you need to be root, but to avoid changing the directory in which we are actually, you only put su without space hyphen, only SU. All right. So, so P, PWD, you are in the uh, right directory. So mm -hmm. now yeah, we here. will create um, a directory to build uh, the Slackware package. So it's makedir, so mkdir, All right. space, slash temp, slash build. B U I L D. Make directory slash temp slash build. Yes. Gotcha. All right. Okay. Now make space install space with uppercase letters dest dir. So D E S T D I R equals slash temp slash build. So that was. All uppercase D E S T D I R. Yes, and then equals slash, but then in lowercase letters slash temp slash build. All right. It looks like it's installed. Okay. So now what we need to do is uh, normally we need to strip uh, and the libraries and the binaries. But a leaf pad, I think, has only a binary. So the command to use is strip strip space hyphen s space slash tmp slash build slash usr slash bin slash asterisk. All right. Slash S. Okay. Oh, it's done. That's good. Yeah. Then, <laughs> in the past, but here, you don't have to do it because uh, the man pages are already zipped. But in the past, they had to zip uh, these man pages. So now we will create an install directory within uh, the slash 10 slash build. So first, cd space slash temp slash build all right you're in the directory no. yeah we're in uh -huh, la uh, uh, no, uh, you need to be in slash temp slash bit could you put a pwd mm -hmm. okay so now you create the directory 
install. So it's uh, make their space install, like the word. All right. Okay, so enter. And now we will change directory and we will go inside this install directory. So it's cd space install. Okay. Now, the best thing to do is to go back to the pages uh, the, that you opened in Firefox, scroll right. down and um, go to the link and the individual files on the left, and which is called slack desc. So the last one. So could you scroll down? Mm -hmm. On the left, the last one is slack iPhone DESC. If you can click on it, okay. could you copy and paste all the lines of this file? And the last one too, because you don't have the last one. Oh, yeah. Okay. You copy. Yes, sir. And then you go into uh, the terminal. Here, you need uh, to create. So you do vim. Slack uh, space slack iPhone desk desc. You open it, yes, sir, and uh, you paste what you copied in uh, the Firefox. Okay, what is the copy command for Vim? For Vim, you go in edit, you go in edit, uh, and you paste. You are in leaf, but. Uh, yeah. Oh, you're yeah. in console, sorry. You yeah, go to console. edit above and you paste. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. It's KDE's console. Yes. There we go. Yes. Okay. Now you need to save this file. Uh, write it, quit. Okay. Okay. This is done. And this is typical for Slackware. Slackware needs that special file because it is a description of uh, the application. And it needs to have exactly 11 lines with the name of uh, the application followed by a colon. So now we will create the package. So we go back into uh, slash temp slash build. So either you do cd space double dot or cd space slash temp slash build. All right. Okay. Now make PKG space iPhone mm -hmm. L, lowercase L, space Y, space iPhone C, space N space double dot okay. slash leaf pad I so leaf pad iPhone uh, then we did the, the version so I see it is For zero point eight Point yeah, one, iPhone x86 underscore 64, iPhone 1 dt dot tgz. And dt is for you. You have created your first package on the Slackware. So you do, you press enter. No, it's that, that make not, PKG. So, sorry, it's a uh, M A word. Yeah. K E yeah. PKG. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. It was created. It was created. Mm -hmm. So now we need to install it because you have created, but it is not installed. Mm -hmm. So sure. what we do? CD space double dot, and then. Yes, you are in slash temp, which is good because all the packages for Slackware are, uh, when you need to install them, they are first in slash TMP. So now you do install 
package, install PKG, sorry. No, no, in one oh, word. One, one word, one. okay. Install gotcha. PKG. Right. PKG. Install uh, PKG, uh, space, and then you uh, L tap completion. All right. Enter. Yep, it says package leaf pad installed. Okay, would you like to open your KD start menu and mm -hmm. go into either utilities or accessories? And are you have the search type leaf pad in the search oh, field? Yeah, since yeah, it's going that to would be, be a lot quicker. Yes, okay. we have leaf pad. Yeah, you Run can launch it. Yeah. And there we go. And there you go. You can see in the help about, and you have the version that we did. So this is the way they did in the past, the classical triptych dot slash configure with some options, make these two commands as a standard user, and then as root, make install in a special directory, and then some commands to create the package so that it has the Slackware format. And finally, to install the package with the historical install PKG command from Slackware. Yeah, that is a, a little bit, yeah, a convoluted way of installing packages. I'm sure we're going to get into some easier ways. Yes, uh, in for just sure. a second. Okay, Serge. So, uh, where to go from here? Is there a so as you saw, ways? this is the the ancient way of doing things. Uh, right. Of course, I can imagine that. Uh, many users um, in this century don't want to apply this method. There are, uh, fortunately, uh, other methods to install uh, packages in Slackware. So a second one we will do is using a tool called SBO PKG. So you need to open your browser and go to, uh, you type in the search the web, you type um, the word SBO PKG, and normally the first site you will see will be, yes, you are already on the good website. Mm -hmm. uh, you need to go to the downloads section, and you need to click, uh, you have a bulleted list, and you need to click on the first bullet, uh, where they say a pre-built Slackware package of the latest version can be downloaded. You click on here and it should. Okay. That's what I like to Fine. see. Pre-built packages. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Already yeah. in the right format, so in the Slackware format. Yeah. So it has arrived in your downloads folder. So now you can go. You open the terminal. Okay, yeah. So let me CD yes. back into my downloads folder. Yes. Do I need to be rude or should I yes, change yes, over? Yes, yes, because you will install it. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, you need to pay attention because you need to yeah. give the full path. Yeah. Slash home. Yeah, slash DT. Yeah. Slash downloads. Unless. Mm. All right. We are there. Uh, and you have and you have the SBO PKG. So that's good. Yes, so sir. now you do, um, you have two ways. Uh, mm -hmm. Either install PKG space s b and then s b and then and then tab completion yes yes okay another way it is upgrade pkg space double hyphen install hyphen new space and then the, the top well, of uh, sbo package it's, okay it's the same so you can enter all right this is uh the okay. package installed it is installed. So okay. now the first time you need to create uh, a sort of a local repository. And to do this, you just type the command SBO PKG. Enter. Create. Then right. you create, yes, correct. And here, here you have, uh, you see uh, several menus. The first one, which is mandatory, is to sync with the remote repository because you have never done it. So, you okay, and we will wait. It can take some time. So the sync, of course, syncing the repos will take yes. a few minutes. So I will pause the recording for a second.
All right, so the sync has completed. So we exit out of that. Okay, so now you can uh, check by yourself uh, different menus. So the change log, uh, for instance, will show you what has changed. So you can put OK, tab OK. And okay. you see all the packages that have changed. You have the date above, and then under the date, you see which packages have changed uh, since the last time. So you can exit. All right. Packages list uninstall gives you uh, the list of the packages uh, that are installed on your system and that you could uninstall. Okay. This is another I update. Okay. Oh, sorry. So you have okay. no, that's normal because we haven't done it. We haven't done any yet. So. Yes, <laughs> any. So we will go directly to um, the, uh, I mean, the menu which we are interested in. This is search. Search the active repository. Yes. There you put, for instance, Ranger. Ranger. Ranger, you like that, I know. No, I really like that file manager. So you yes. take the second one. That was system slash add, Ranger. And you add to the queue. So, okay. Tab over. Okay. Ranger has been added to the queue. Good. Mm. You go back. And hit OK. No, no, not, not okay. No, you not, go no, no. Uh, with a tap, you go to the third one, back. back. Yes, here. Okay. Oh, no, sorry, that's my fault. Uh, so you um, cancel, because otherwise it wants you to install another package. We cancel, and uh, here it's good. So we go to the queue, you go to queue, and we'll, we'll go to process, the last one. Process right. the current queue. Ranger is there. Okay, and now you can say okay. All right. Install. And okay. Install. It will do three download, build, and install. You can click on start. All right. Now it's back in the, the terminal. All right. Queue process complete. Press any key to continue. So you, you press any key. Would you like uh, to keep the queue or would you no, like to clear it? No, we will clear it. We don't need it. Okay. The queue okay. has been cleared. Yes. Now you, you say uh, back. Back, okay. And we exit. Now try to see if Ranger uh, was correctly installed and works. Okay. You can go in your... Uh, oh yeah, so you can go there if you wish. So you see that it works as you know Ranger. Mm -hmm. You can try if everything works as expected. I'm not going to do much, much here because okay. I actually launched that as root. I don't want to play around in Ranger okay. as root. So. Okay, I understand you. <laughs> All right. So, uh, I do want to keep this VM. So. <laughs> I, I do. So we will do SBO PKG a second time. SBO PKG, okay. And just hit enter. Okay, we go to search. All right. And search the active repository. Yes, you put dead beef. Dead I know beef. you like it. Oh, like it. Like it a lot. So add to the queue. Add to the queue. Oh, yeah. This is much better than the other way we Yes, installed. very easy. So, okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Back. Um, mm -hmm. Go to the queue. Queue. Oh, wrong. Uh, yes, install. Okay. No, 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 no. Okay. You can put okay. Oh, we're, we're, we can so, go there. Okay. Process. Install. Okay. Install. Okay. Start. Let's start. Okay. And it looks like it's pulling down the file. Okay. It's installing. And of course, we chose Ranger and Dead Beef here today because uh, obviously I like them, but also they don't have a, a very many dependencies. At they all, have so. no dependency. Right. So this is the easy way. It's to install right. a package without no dependency at all. Our next example will be one with a dependency. Okay. And uh, dead beef is still building here. No, it shouldn't take very long. Well, I'm not sure if uh, it's Slackware already have an audio player on it. It should have had all these codecs and everything already. Yes, yes. Uh, Slackware yeah. has a lot of codecs already. Yeah. So you, you, you can try. So in the meantime, you can already take a radio stream uh, from the United States. 
Mm -hmm. And that ends with a dot uh, .mp3, for instance. And when that beef will be uh, created and installed, you can go into file, add to location, and you paste uh, the URL link of your radio stream. And you can show just for a few seconds that it works. Okay. Because you have no... Um, Music list, of course, in no, this. No, I don't VM. have anything here. But you can you can show it with the uh, URL link of a radio stream. All right. I'm still waiting for it to build. Yes. I'll uh, pause the video for a couple of minutes while this yes. continues. All right, and it looks like Dead Beef has finished building. That took a couple of minutes. So press Could any you check key to get this really correctly installed. Yeah, yeah, we can go through the. Uh, the KDE menu here and uh, search for it. So dead beef, make sure it is here. It is here. You know, run dead beef. And there we have it. I have no music in this VM to play, but we could open up, you know, a URL uh, of some kind. Uh, let's see. Add, add audio, location. Add, add location. location. Yes. And if I had a URL, I could add it to test it out. So give me just a second. All right. So dead beef, I've got a... Uh, link to a radio station here just to test out the audio and I'll play it. Nobody in the video will be able to hear this for fear of this video getting taken down, but audio is in fact working. Dead Beef is working as expected. So good job on that, Serge. So uh, where to next? We should do something more complicated than Ranger and Leafpad. We yes. should have something with some dependencies. Yes, of course. We will take a package which has dependencies. So. Okay. You can launch SBO PKG. All right. We go to the search menu. You put XFE. XFE search. Okay. And you, you say add to the queue. Add to the queue. XFS XFE has been added to the queue. Okay. Okay. Uh, now you can say. Um, I think OK should bring us back. Yeah, it brings us back to the menu. OK. We go to the queue. Add XFE to queue. Yes. OK. OK. We go to process. OK. OK. And Install. then you can start. And you will see the error we will get. OK. <laughs> Oh, yeah, the, the, the viewers have to see how you get an error, how you fix it. Yeah. I like showing mistakes on, uh, on, yes. on these videos, too. Yeah. Oftentimes, I make a lot of mistakes on my videos, and I, I just leave them in the videos. I never like to cut them out, because if I make them, somebody else will make them. So what, what do they say? You see. So you I'm going to read this. Would you like to continue processing the rest of the queue, or would you like to abort it? This field... Package is a dependency of another package, so it's complaining about dependencies. Okay, but what did he say above? Config U dot space yeah, lib, error libfox libfox lib lib not found. Not found. So, so we need the fox library before we can continue. So we will say abort. So no to abort this. Yes. Okay, and then we're back into. Uh, SBO PKG. We can keep uh, the queue because we need XFE. Yeah. All right. So we go back uh, to the main menu. So tab over to the main menu. You okay. go to search. Search. You type Fox, F O X, enter. Okay. And then you have to choose the Fox Toolkit libraries. There we go. Fox Toolkit, that one. Add to the queue. And then. Uh, you go to the uh, queue. Okay, queue. Okay. Fox Toolkit has been added. Yes. Okay. Um, process it or? You, well, no, we, we had normally um, an option to sort the queue, but I didn't see. Maybe in process. Oh. Uh, go to process and we will see. Yeah, let's see. Uh, well, it just says download, build, install. So I'm not sure if it's going to try to do XFE again. Uh, I yeah, don't know. We'll be able to build it without, but you, yeah. We can cancel. We have to see an item yeah. which shows us to solve the queue. So we can okay. go to to the queue. I yes, I had it. Um, so this one just says just say add it. So um, this is right. normally we should have a menu 
um, giving us the option to sort the queue. Uh, manage ah, the, the queue. queue. Manage okay. the queue. There okay, we go. Sorry, there, there is. Now we go to sort. Okay. And All we right, need so. to put the second one above. Okay. There so, we go. Yes, this, this is good. Right. Now you can say, okay. Here we go um, to process the current queue. Okay. And now it is in the right order, so yep. you can press OK. OK. And this and was important because... And now you see, you will first install the Fox Toolkit, and then it will install the XFE package. Right. It will take you... some time, so you can... Okay, yeah. We... And we can uh, install XFE first because it requires the Fox toolkit. So you have to do them in the correct order. Otherwise it'll yes. fail. So this shows you that SBO PKG by its own doesn't solve the dependencies. You have to tell it you... the right order for processing the queue. Okay. And I will pause so... the recording for a second while this builds. All right. It looks like a uh, XFE finished building. So yes, I see that Fox is okay, XFE also. So now you can clear the queue. We don't need it anymore. Queue has been cleared. So we go back. Okay. We go back and exit. All right, we're back so in the prompt. You have to show that XFE was correctly installed. So if I go to the... KDE kickoff menu here and search for XFE. Yes. We do have an option for running XFE. And we yes. have it. We have it. So, as you can see, um, I think in view or in panel, you have the possibility to open it as a three panes. Let's see, view, yeah, three. So, you take three panes, uh, a three and two panels, sorry. Okay. There we go. So you see, you have three panes, the left one and the two in the middle. And so you can easily drag and drop because you can go in different directories from the left one and the right one. And if you click above on the menu, uh, either in left panel or in right panel, you should have a, a synchronized option somewhere or in the tools maybe. But there is an option to synchronize yep. the synchronize panels. Oh, synchronize panels. You see, see if you absolutely want to have exactly the same in two different directories, you can click on that one. Mm -hmm. But the very interesting um, tool is in the same menu. You have a new root window. Could you click on it? New root window. Yes, yes sir. Enter our root your password. password. Enter. And I'm not sure that did anything or not. Let's uh, see. May, maybe, yes, in, in Slackware, it could be a problem. Um, in, in Sandwalk, it wasn't. Okay. Yeah, um, it's not wanting to do the... Uh, so it, uh, it, it will not do. I will give you the command uh, to correct it later if we have enough time, because we okay. still have to do the SBO tools. But I will sure. give you the command to correct this. Uh, let us say it's not a, exactly an error, but uh, Slackware hasn't configured XFE the way um, other distributions do it. So it won't, it won't work. Yeah, yeah it's not where I am now. So. But I know the, the record run for it. OK. Uh, where to now, Serge? So, we have shown two different ways. Now we will go to a tool uh, which allows you to solve the dependencies for you. So okay. we will install the SBO tools package. So if you go to SBO tools, it's hosted on GitHub. Of course, I'll link to all the websites in the show description. So yes. we're at the uh, web page for SBO tools. So you need to scroll down. Yes, sir. And you see in blue, ready-made package. Yes, sir. You click on it. Click that. 
And save the file. Save the file, yes. And the file has downloaded. Okay, so we open a terminal. Okay. You uh, PWD to see in which directory you are. We're already in oh, it. Okay, that's good, alas. And the SBO tools is in it. So okay. in, install PKG space SBO T tap completion. Okay. Enter. All right. So the package SBO tools has now been installed. So we will launch a um, command to fetch the repository as we did with the SBO package. It's a sort of a updating synchronization for the first time. So okay. the command is SBO snap in one word, space fetch. Yes, enter. Unsupported Slackware version. Okay, okay so. but it tells you that uh, in a Perl file, yeah. um, you have some problem. Yeah, so, that regular expression is not uh, written okay. correctly. Yeah, so, so we need to go to your web browser and see how the issue was solved. Okay, so if we go back to the issues page here on to SBO the tool. They have and the you issues click tab. on the need to escape the left brace. So this is the issue here. And this as you see, on line 244 of the um, file, which will you'll see in the command, in the terminal, I mean, you mm -hmm. need to put a backslash before each curly brace, the left one and the right one. So you need to open in the terminal with Vim. Okay. So and what was... Vim, and you take um, the file, no, not the here, in the terminal, it is mentioned, slash user, slash share, slash Perl file. Oh, I see it, yeah. You see okay. it. You, you use that one. You can use a tab completion. No, there is uh, a slash, a slash after SVO. Yeah. Tab completion, it will, it will get quick. Slash B, tab completion. Build. Yeah. Yes. Now, you need to go to the line 244. There we go. Okay, and now you need to insert a backslash before each curly brace and then save the file. No, no, a backslash, a backslash. Ah, sorry. Backslash before yes. each, each opening and closing brace. And closing, yes. Which is only you, two uh, in this line. Control, oh, no, 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 to, to, sorry. Uh, colon WQ yep. um, yeah, to, to exclamation point. Okay, it's written. It's written. You, you relaunch the command, SBO snap space fetch. Now you see it tells you that the uh, Slackwork version is Unsupported. unsupported. Mm -hmm. You go back to the issues. So we go back to issues here in SB tool. Yes, SBO and tool, you so. see the second issue is new Slackware current naming convention breaks the version check. Okay. Yes, and that's that's one. So now you go back to the console. Arrow key up. And you change build.pm, you, you, you put, no, no, you, you delete. Oh, yes, okay, you can do that way if you wish. Uh, uppercase util.pm, enter. You go to the line. What um, line was that? Uh, 219. 219. Yes, 219. Okay. So this, this is the... So regular expression. Okay, is causing within us a the square brackets, you delete all that is within the square bracket. 
Okay, yeah. you put zero hyphen nine dot, and then before the dollar, you need to put backslash plus question mark. But you have to go to the website to see if I'm not wrong. But I think I'll, it is I'll correct. Check it. Yes. You can check so it is correct. So we changed the caret backslash to zero dash nine dot. No, so we did that right. And then backslash plus question, question mark. mark. Okay. So it's okay. So, that, so we that save the file. Work. So escape twice and then write the file. Okay. All right. And then you launch. Yes. And now and it is working it is as expected. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. So a couple of errors that come up when you first try SBO tools, but they're very simple to fix and they're right there on the, the GitHub page. Uh, you just change those lines uh, in Vim or Nano, or we could have used LeafPad, which we installed. Any text editor would have worked for that. You have to be root though. Yes, you have to be root because you change files, which are in directories owned by root. So this may take a minute, so I will pause the recording. You can pause the record, yes. Okay, and it looks like that is finished building. So now that we have a copy uh, in a local copy, I mean, of the repository of the Slack builds tree, we will see, for instance, how you can find some packages. So we will check, for instance, the packages we already installed. So um, you can put SBO find. SBO find. Space leafpad. Leafpad. Oh, okay. God. And it tells us where the binary, I guess, is located here. So it's you see, it will yep. tell you that it has found leafpad and mousepad. Of course, if we if leafpad was not installed, we could install it because we see they have a package on the slackbuilds.org. You can do the same command, so arrow key up arrow key and up. change uh, leafpad by ranger. Ranger. Yes. And the same kind of information. Okay. okay, you have the same information. You see that they have a package. Uh, mm -hmm. So you could install ranger if you wish so. And now you do the arrow key up for the and you replace it that beef. Okay. So they have a package. So if that beef was not installed, you could install it with a command I will give you um, later. And we will do it the last time for XFE. Okay. And where to now? So you do SBO find XFE. XBO find XFE. Yes. And there we go. Okay. But here you see, and this is very useful. It tells you you need Fox Toolkit yes. and XFE, which SBO PKG right. didn't tell you. Yes. Yeah, so so uh, it gives knows, us the dependencies. It knows that if it you need to install XFE, it will also need to install Fox Python Toolkit. Okay. So to have a package with a lot of dependencies and some issue, we will try to install Clementine. Oh yeah, that's going to be a challenge. Let's that's just a good challenge. <laughs> so SBO install no no. Oh, no, you can check, gonna... check it. Let's, you can use to find Clementine. Let's see what kind of dependencies. Yes. So there we go. Uh, no, so here it will tell you what it finds on um, the slackbills.org. Okay. It finds two packages, Clementine yeah. and lib my GPO, GPO. QT. Yeah. Now we will ask him to install Clementine. So it's a SBO install in one word, space. Um, Clementine. No version number, just Clementine? Just Clementine. Okay. It says. So you Chroma see, print. it tells you Chroma Print is a dependency. What would you like to do? So you say okay. yes. Yes, uh, obviously. Uh, so what does it tell? It looks, it looks like, like crypto, crypto as yeah. options. Here, we don't define uh, specific options, so you can put enter or n, the same. All right. So, what does it tell? Uh, proceed with crypto? 
Yes. Yes. Proceed with leap econet. Yes. Okay. You don't need to type if if the um, the letter between the square brackets is for instance y. If you, you press enter? enter, it means it will be y. Okay. So that's the default. For it's the default. Okay. All right. So we did uh, what Sphinx is. Proceed with six. Yes. Yeah. Proceed with Python. Yes. Yeah. Obviously yes. we. Proceed. Yes. Yeah. You see, there are a lot of dependencies. Yeah. Proceed. Google yes. App Utils will need. Yes. Protobuf. Yes. Yes. And of course, Clementine. Proceed itself. with Clementine. Yes. Are you sure you want to continue? Yes. No okay. good. And this may take a minute or two, so I'll pause the recording while Clementine yeah. installs. All right, Serge, so we have been waiting, you and me, about an hour for Clementine to build here, and it is finally completed. <laughs> so let's check it out. Uh, the long-awaited. Is it here? It is. Run Clementine. And there we have it. So you can click on internet in the left pane. Okay. And then you click on Magnatune. You wait until it is downloading its downloading catalog. Downloading the catalog, yep. yes. All right. And then you can choose an artist you know. It doesn't matter. Uh, any artist. Uh, it's not yes. actually going to play on no. the stream. Just but... to... Just okay, to... you have uh, all the... Now you can double click on the first one. And it is playing. Okay. All right. So very cool. So, so it took a long time to be compiled, but at least it is yeah, correctly but... installed. But to be fair, we knew it was going to take a long time because Clementine yes. is a rather large program with a lot of uh, dependencies and libraries and whatnot. <laughs> yes. Uh, all right. Well, this was fun, Serge. <laughs> Let me close all that out. <laughs> uh, we got way too many tabs open here. Yes. All right. Well, I'm going to keep this VM of Slackware around because you and me may get around to doing a third Slackware video at some point. Uh, we still do have a couple of more package management things we might show regarding Slackware. Uh, yes. Final Indeed. thoughts? <laughs> so I think you might give the bonus to your viewers and to oh, show yes. that you can open XFE as root. Yes. Uh, before we go, we we did solve that problem, XFE. We run it. We now do have the option of new root window. And if I type my root password here at the prompt and hit enter, we are now running XFE as root. So... We could actually show how we fixed that real quick because I can pull up the console again and see if it still has that command we ran earlier. It may or may not. I don't see it in the history here. Me... Okay, but I can give it if you wish. Yeah. Oh, yes, it has uh, there it line is. 10. Number 10. But, yeah. but don't do it again. Okay, yeah. Just show idea. it. But we this can't line it right here, x host space si colon local user colon root. And once you enter that, uh, do we have to enter that as our regular user, or do we have as to As a standard user. You can't do user. it as root, because normally uh, root is forbidden right. in that X sessions. One, that X sessions is owned by a standard user. Yeah, so another problem solved. So I've had this uh, VM here of Slackware kicking around now for, for about a month. Really enjoy playing around with Slackware. I, I actually didn't expect to like Slackware as much as I do, but it kind of does fit me even though i like a lot of rolling release distros and a lot of you know i like to break things and fix them really i like stable distros really you know my my home really for many years was you know debian stable and slackware you know has that that stableness to it if you will you know because it's not constantly updating you know anything unless you're doing it so i i really like slackware for the stability so um uh, how are you? Uh, what what main operating system are you running, Serge? I know you you hop around a little bit, but yes. So um, I share the computer with my wife, and uh, she knows nothing about Linux. Uh, so this computer runs uh, Windows Seven. Okay. Uh, at work, I'm obliged to work with Windows Seven. I have no choice. But uh, when I 
um, boot uh, Windows 7, I immediately go to, in a VM, mainly a Gen 2 VM. Very cool. Well, but thank I'm, you for I'm waiting until uh, 2020 because I told my wife, uh, okay, Windows 7 is the last um, yeah. Windows operating system that I can stand. Windows 10 is a no-go. So um, I'll probably... For, for, for... For, for the purpose. shared computer, we will yeah. use MX. Yeah. And uh, for myself, I will buy uh, another computer and I will put Gen 2 on it. Yeah, yeah. get you a Threadripper, Serge. <laughs> yes, get if the, I get... can, I will have a th Maybe we, he, um, the Threadripper of the first or second generation will be cheaper will be affordable, in 2020. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, even, you know, like the 8-core, 10-core. Yes. Uh, yeah, I mean they're they're Six, affordable. Sixteen cores is enough, more yeah. than enough. Yeah, I mean you don't need the eighteen hundred dollar. Uh, no, 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 no. Thirty two core, sixty. No, I don't need that. Don't need that. <laughs> Although it, it would get those compile times down if you did that. Yes, yes, that's that's true. <laughs> but with if you have sixteen cores, it's already incredible. You're you're, you're doing good. Yeah, at that point. Yes, for sure. Uh, all right. Well, thank you for joining me again, Serge, and I look forward to getting together with you at some point in the future and doing part three. Okay. Thanks. Yes. Bye. And before I go, of course, I need to give a special thanks to all my Patreon supporters. I'm talking about A.K. Allen, Alex Handsome, Tony, Bart, Benjamin, Ben, Bruno, Brian, Carlos, Christian, Chuck, Dan, the other Dan, Daniel, David, the other David, Eduardo, Greg, Humade, Interceptor, Jake, John, Carl, Katrina, Keith, Leor, Marcus, the other Marcus, Matt, Mark, Martin, Matthias, Michael, Mr. GFY, Mr. Smarty Pants, Mr. Neely Pops, Paul, Rob, Robert, Ron, Silvio, First Stephen, Second Stephen, Third Stephen, Swami, Tiedemann, Voice Lob, Tubella, and John, you guys. You guys rock. You guys help make this show possible. Peace, guys.